and welcome back to my kitchen. I know a lot of you are probably done with your um, garden tomatoes, you know, harvesting them and probably preserving them, canning them, whatever it is that you do. And so this might not be a help for you this year, but possibly you can log it away in your head for next year's harvest. We're a little bit later than normal. Um, we got our seedlings into the ground a little late this year. We had some really bad drought um, conditions early in the season and that kind of stunted things and so we're really behind but my tomatoes are really starting to come on strong now and so I am preserving tomatoes in every way shape and form and for years I have blanched my tomatoes in boiling water to slip the skins off and that's how I prepared my tomatoes I also went ahead and I am um, invested in a couple of food mills and both of those things work just wonderfully, okay? You know, don't get me wrong because I've used both of those me methods and I do love both methods. But what I figured out a few years back was something completely different because um, number one, I hate the time and the effort that it takes to blanch and peel tomatoes. When you're preserving huge amounts of tomatoes, if you've blanched and slipped those skins off, you know exactly what I mean. It really is very time consuming. It's a wonderful method, it works great, and I'm not downing that at all. And I might still use that in some certain applications. Um, but then the other thing is, is that the food mill, the food mills work wonderfully. I love the food mills. You just slice up your raw tomato and you stick them through the food mill and it takes the skins and the seeds out and they're wonderful. But the problem with either one of those things is that at the end, when you're done preparing those tomatoes, whether it be blanching and slipping the skins or putting them through the food mill, what you're left with is such a liquidy, fluidy tomato product that most of us spend hours cooking it down and evaporating all of that extra tomato juice or water off of the tomatoes in order to thicken it to a point that we're happy with the product. You know, when you're making spaghetti sauce or marinara sauce or <clears throat> stewed tomatoes, um, you know, most of us cook a lot of that tomato juice off to thicken the product so that it sticks to our spaghetti noodles or whatever it is. Um, also, in dehydrating, I know that the common way of dehydrating tomatoes, and I might add, if I could, dehydrating tomatoes has become my absolute favorite go-to. Um, dehydrated tomato powder is so easy to use. It is such a, it, it, it saves jars, it saves lids, and it saves storage space. I mean, I love my canned tomatoes and I still can tomatoes also, but a lot of my crop I dehydrate <clears throat> just simply, excuse me, I have a frog in my throat here, just simply because it saves so much storage room and it's just so easy to powder that dried tomato up and, and make a fresh sauce out of that tomato powder. Um, but you can explore those things on your own. That's neither here nor there, but what I want to share with you today is to avoid all of that cook down time, you know, whether it be in your oven or on, you know, in an electric roaster, you know, stick that spaghetti sauce or, or um, salsa in, in the roaster for, you know, 16, 18 hours. We're using all of this energy, you know, whether it be gas or electric, whatever it is, we're using all this energy and it takes so long. And if you try to do it on top of your stove, a lot of times you'll have scorching on the bottom of your pan. And who wants that? Because it flavors all of your tomato product and just ruins the whole thing. So where I'm going with all of this is my method on how I prepare tomatoes now versus how I used to do it, which was slipping off the skins or putting them through the food mill. Now I have found the best, in my own opinion, the best way of preparing tomatoes, whether that would be for stewed tomatoes or sauce or salsa or even for dehydrating, okay? I don't spend any time at all skinning and de-seeding my tomatoes anymore. Just, I don't do it. <clears throat> I wash my tomatoes up and I core them and then I slice them, skin and all, into a great big roasting pan. And I'll show you here what I have. I'll tip my, tip my camera down here. I have an 18 quart roaster and so this thing is just packed full of tomatoes. So all I do is I wash my tomato and I remove, you know, if there would be any 
bad spots or you know bug bites or whatever on here of course I remove any bad areas but simply I just core the tomato by removing that top and then I just slice the tomato into my roasting pan I mean you can't get any quicker and easier than this and this has its skin on okay this has not been de-skinned at all this is just a raw clean tomato and I just go ahead and I fill my roasting pan. Now my roasting pan is not greased and there is no water in here at all. This is just a clean roasting pan with all of my raw sliced tomatoes in it. I'm going to cover this with a lid and then I'm going to stick it in a, I'll get that on there, stick that in a 350 degree oven. 350 degree oven for an hour and a half or two hours. I do not stir it at all in that time. I just put the lid on, put it in the oven, and walk away for an hour and a half to two hours. And after I get these baked, then I'm gonna show you what I do next. It's pretty amazing that you can remove all of this tomato juice. And instead of cooking down your sauce or whatever it is, and having all that tomato juice just evaporate into thin air, you can ladle off this juice and you can can that and you're not wasting anything at all. I just, I swear by this method. Um, I think you'll be impressed with it too. So I'm gonna get this into my oven and I'm gonna let it bake for about an hour and a half or two hours and then I'll come back and I'll show you what I do next. All right, so I um, baked my tomatoes for approximately an hour and 45 minutes. Now remember that I have an 18 quart roaster and so if you're working with a smaller amount of, of tomatoes you probably wouldn't need that much time. If you're working with a larger amount of tomatoes, first of all I'm very jealous that you have a pan that big <laughs> and secondly if it's a larger amount of tomatoes then you might need some more time. But as you can see I never stirred them. They are they're just baked completely left alone and the reason why I don't stir them is because I don't want to keep reincorporating the tomato meat and the juice, the, the juice together. I want them to separate and you can see the amount of juice that is just literally just sitting in this pan around the tomatoes and so I just start ladling this off and this is really wonderful tomato juice I will go on to can this as tomato juice but what I'm doing is I'm, I'm removing I'm able to remove so much liquid um, with just such small amounts of energy cost you know just my oven on for about an hour and 45 minutes two hours maybe at the max and I'm going to have all of this juice removed from the tomatoes so that it will make a thicker sauce or um, you know, thicker stewed tomatoes or thicker, um, um, oh, salsa. Sorry, for some reason I just couldn't even think about it in my head. Um, and this is really a good tip for, like I mentioned before, if you're going to go ahead and dehydrate your tomatoes because now I'm going to be able to put this cooked tomato mash into my dehydrator and I will be able to fit this entire bunch of tomatoes into my dehydrator at once instead of doing the raw sliced tomatoes and it taking up so much room on my dehydrator trays. So I will just sit here and ladle off this juice for a little while and I'll make a couple more wells you know in other areas of the pan and just collect the juice from different areas and you can see it just refills up with juice just very very quickly there's no trick to it. You just press down with your ladle and make a little well with the back of your ladle and all of that juice will rush in there. And I'll just do this in all sorts of different areas in my pan until I have removed as much juice as I can. And then I'll start another little video on another little um, step that I take to remove even more juice from it. So I'll just sit here and lay, ladle off my juice and then I'll be back in in just a few minutes. Alright guys, so as you can see at this point in time, I have removed quite a bit of juice out of these tomatoes. In fact, I have probably five quarts of juice in my pan. 
that I will go ahead and can. And that is just from, oh, I may maybe say 10 minutes of just standing here and ladling off the juice in the wells that I've created with the back of my, uh, my ladle and just taking that juice off. Now, if you were going to do sauce or stewed tomatoes or something like that, this might be a dry enough consistency that you might want to go ahead and use it at this point in time. Another option would be to put this through the Foley food mill or whatever type of food mill you have if you would like to then remove the skins and seeds. Now like I said, I don't ever do that anymore. I just leave my skins and seeds um, in it just simply because I go ahead and I dehydrate most of our tomatoes. And so after I dehydrate them, I powder them, and we don't even notice the skins and seeds. So since I am going to go ahead and dehydrate these, now this would be the perfect thing to start a sauce or whatever with, so you stop at whatever point in time you feel like you have removed as much moisture as you want to. And of course, remember, if you think that you've gotten it a little bit too dry and taken a little too much fluid off, you've got that wonderful tomato juice that you just collected. You can always add a little bit back in. Um, and that's another tip, too. When I'm canning my tomato juice, when, I'm de uh, when I've dehydrated my tomatoes, I will take a jar of my home canned tomato juice, and that is what I use to rehydrate my tomato powder. So then I get this really wonderful tomato flavor. But this is another little trip to, tip to get it just even a little bit more dry. So if you're going to go ahead and you're going to dehydrate like what I do, I take and I start using gravity. And so I have this great big old uh, wooden uh, cutting board. Let's see if I can get it on the camera. Uh, really thick. There you can see how thick it is. Really thick board. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to start working with gravity here. And so I'll take my pan and just tip it up at an angle so that, you know, all of my juice is going to one side of the pan. And I'll scoop some more out. And after I have removed as much as I can that way by using gravity, then what I do is I just start very carefully, you want to treat your tomatoes gently now because they are cooked and they'll mush up. I start pulling them up to the top of my pan. Okay, and that allows the fluid to fill. Let's see if I can tip down just a little bit more. There, you can see how all the juice is running down to this one side of the pan. So I'll just pull my tomatoes up to the top side of the pan. Maybe I need to back this up just a little bit more. My tomato juice is in the way. Sorry for my bumbling around here. I'm working with one hand. <clears throat> and just carefully pull those tomatoes up to the higher side of your roasting pan. And just kind of mound them up on top of each other. Look at all that juice that runs. That wonderful juice is just collecting down in the bottom of the pan. And you can continue doing this for another, you know, however long you feel like you want to, to get them as dry as you want the product to be. So I'm just going to continue ladling, ladling, ladling off, excuse me, some more tomato juice here and allow gravity to work. Gravity will just let all of that juice run down to the one side of the pan since I have the other side elevated. And I'm going to be able to collect even more juice off of this. So I will sit here and I will carefully pile my tomatoes up, let gravity work, remove more juice, and then we'll come back and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done and ready to dehydrate them. Okay, so after I put my, uh, put my pan at an angle here and I use gravity, you can see how thick my tomatoes, my cooked tomatoes are becoming, right? All of that excess fluid is being removed. Now what I do now is I just kind of go back and I kind of squeeze and mix them up just a little bit to allow even more moisture. Hopefully you can see it running down the pan there kind of mash them and, and um, squish them against the side of the pan a little bit and kind of lift them up so that anything underneath can run downhill. <clears throat> and that will remove even more moisture. Now remember that my 
goal is I'm going to be dehydrating these. And so the more moisture I can get out, the better. Now you're going to ask yourself, aren't you removing all the flavor? Well, no, I'm not removing all the flavor. Um, they still taste very tomatoey and are wonderful. Um, so like I said, you just go ahead and you do this for as long and however you want to, to remove as much moisture as you feel like you wish to have removed for whatever project you're going to be doing with them, sauce or whatever else. Just look at how wonderful and thick they are now. It's just, it's a wonderful medium and it is such an energy saving thing, especially for like those who are living off grid and really have to think about conserving their LP, um, you know, for their uh, cookers outside or their stove indoors, you know, when you're working with an LP tank and you have to have that filled or take it to town and have it filled, you know, you really think about conserving energy a little bit more than maybe, you know, uh, being hooked up to direct utilities. But with utility costs rising, I think we all have to think about things like this. And um, it's just, I've been doing this for a few years this way, and I am just totally impressed with it, and I think it works out great. So I'm going to go ahead then, and I'm going to collect just a little bit more juice, and then I'll show you the comparison um, just simply because I am dehydrating these, I will show you the comparison between a fresh cut tomato on my dehydrator trays compared to, and you saw how full this pan was, compared to how these will fit on the dehydrator tray. And so that is um, an energy saving thing too because I have cooked them a little bit, I've removed so much fluid, I can fit more tomatoes into my dehydrator this way than just by fresh cut and slicing them and laying them on the mats. But I'll give you that comparison after I collect. Look at all this juice again that I got in the bottom of the pan. That was bone dry and now I've um, squished and kind of stirred them and gotten a whole bunch more juice that I can remove. So I'm going to get this room, uh, this juice collected and I will be back in a few more minutes. Alright, so we're back. I've collected even more juice off of there. So as you can see, my 18 quart roaster has been reduced down to, mm, I would say maybe four quarts of just the meat pulp, you know, skin, seeds, everything. Just the, the meaty portions of the tomatoes. I have, you guys, literally out of this one pan, I have removed, and I don't know if you can see it maybe on the camera here or not. Let's see if I can get that cord. I don't know if you can see it in my stock pot here or not, but I am at the eight quart mark on my big stock pot. I removed eight quarts of tomato juice out of this batch of tomatoes. Um, you know, to me, it's just absolutely incredible that you can remove that much moisture so quickly and so easily and with such a small amount of fuel cost or energy cost. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and like I said, I got mine fairly dry. You know, I just took a little extra time. I drained off a little extra um, tomato juice from my pulp just simply because I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to dehydrate them. Um, but now like I said, you could have stopped at any point in time along that tomato juice removal um, so that it is at the consistency for what you want to use those tomatoes for, whether it be for sauce or, you know, for um, salsa or whatever. Uh, you could take this right now as it is and make it into a wonderful tomato paste. To be honest, that's how nice and reduced and dry it is. And this is on less than two hours, less than two hours in the oven, and I'm already to this much of a reduced state. I just think this method is amazing. I've been using this method now for a few a few years, and I just honestly, I really feel like it's the best way for me at least um, because I can just reduce it so quickly and so cheaply this way. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lay my tomatoes out on my dehydrator trays. I'm going to get everything set up, and I want to show you a comparison between slices of fresh tomatoes and my roasted um, you know, previously juice ladled off tomatoes. And then you can see a comparison of how many more you can actually fit into your dehydrator compared to doing them raw. And 
This is also going to reduce my dehydrating time because the tomatoes are that much more dry already before I even go ahead and put them into the dehydrator. So let me get everything set up there and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, so we're back again. I've got my dehydrator stuff set up here. Um, now, some of you may or may not know, we have a homemade dehydrator. So my, dehyd my dehydrator trays are a little bit larger and a little bit different than others just because it's a homemade model. But you'll get the gist of what I'm trying to say here no matter what model of dehydrator you have. When you have a raw sliced tomato, like you've got it prepared for the dehydrator, and you start laying these tomatoes out on your trays, you know how much room these fresh slices take up. And like I said, my trays are quite a bit larger than most other people's. So now this is a single, literally a single tomato. And I have an extremely large tray here, so I can maybe fit on a partial other tomato just to finish this tray. But on one tray, I can only dehydrate one and a half tomatoes. Now in your smaller round model of dehydrators, you might not even be able to fit on a single tomato per tray. Now think about how long that's going to take to get a whole bunch of tomatoes done. It would be an insane amount of time. You just can't move that much product through the dehydrator in this manner. Now with the pre-cooked and pre-drained tomatoes, I can then just take my mash, and by the way, on my trays, I always line everything with parchment paper. It is not wax paper. Wax paper and parchment paper are two very different things. Parchment paper. And the reason why I do this is because it prevents anything from sticking to the trays or falling through the trays as they reduce in size you know, things like to fall through that mesh on your trays. But my point right now is um, I can take, and instead of only fitting maybe one and a half tomato on a tray, I have reduced these tomatoes down just by a simply two hour baking period and draining it, and I can probably fit on the equivalent of 15 tomatoes per trays. So I can get a heck of a lot more tomatoes into my dehydrator all at one time in this way. I am just really, I, I'm sold on this, on this method. Like I said, you can tell I'm, I'm pretty excited about it and, and uh, pretty excited to share it. Um, that's just my tip on that. Now I'll show you what they turn out like. If you are interested in dehydrating your tomatoes, I'll show you what they turn out like. They come out and you want your tomatoes to be completely crispy, okay? Now I did get a little too hot and so some of them are a little on the brown side, but that doesn't flavor them bad at all. But they're completely crunchy, crispy, no wetness left at all. And this is how you want your tomatoes to be, to the crisp stage. Now as far as the parchment paper is concerned, I didn't completely remove all of my tomatoes from the dehydrator off the parchment paper because I want you to see how easy it is to get these off of the parchment paper. Now dehydrating tomatoes, they get stuck to the trays like terrible, right? Well, you use this parchment paper and look at they just peel right off with no problem whatsoever. They don't stick. They just come right off of the parchment paper with no effort at all. And then I'm not stuck cleaning up a tray either. Look at how beautiful that is. Just parchment paper, nothing special. I didn't grease them at all. Just plain parchment paper. And I reuse this, as you saw with my uh, the tray that I loaded over here, I reuse the parchment paper many times until I just feel like it's either cracked or so soiled that I just don't want to use it again but I reuse this parchment paper many, many times in my dehydrator. You can see there's a bunch of different juices and stuff on there, but it still works fabulous. So I line all of my dehydrator trays with parchment paper. Now in order to make your dehydrated tomatoes into powder, what I do is I kind of break them up into smaller pieces 
and then I put them into an electric coffee grinder and I pulse the electric coffee grinder just you know bzz, 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 until all of the tomatoes are into a powder and that's how I make tomato powder so I hope that this helps you in hopefully a lot of ways today I know that tomatoes is a staple in so many of our homes and I was just really excited to figure out this method of how to remove all of that juice now like I said I've got eight quarts of tomato juice off of these just this one roasting pan of tomatoes today and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to can up those eight quarts of juice and you know that I'll use in soups or I'll boil potatoes in them or you know I use it to even rehydrate my tomatoes um, it can be tomato juice you know you all know how to use tomato juice um, so instead of cooking your sauce or whatever it is for hours and just evaporating that all off you're able to capture all of that tomato juice and use that also and avoid all of your scorching or burning issues too in the cook down period so I hope that you find this video helpful um, either this year or maybe next year when your tomatoes are in the garden again and I hope that you enjoyed spending your time with me today happy canning everybody